This is my home. Tasman. A shared driveway by many. Just checking out some of the beauty out my window as I head on back up to the farmhouse. The logo of our channel, Bruno, 10 years ago was filmed right there. He was standing there and he was silhouetting against that sky behind him. Started off being just videos of pig hunting. I made for a few mates. It was never ever meant to be a commercial venture. It's my job now, it's my bread and butter. It's what puts uh, food on the table and makes stuff happen for everybody. But back then it was just a bit of fun and uh, how life has changed and how the journey's been anyway. Thanks to all you guys joining us down this video. The moon's still up while people are going to work this morning. The bore vane's telling us we've got an offshore breeze this morning. Super duck, well, he's <laughs> come to say g'day. How are you, mate? Okay, saying g'day. Hey, you good sleep? You are right, eh? Good, mate. Me mate Craig made that, West Coast Feral. Beautiful. That's for after walks. This morning I'm taking just pace for a walk and then I'll pick the other dogs up and take them. Our next job is to turn this over and make into a garden. These plots here, it's good soil. Probably a job for Damo on the house truck. What you guys are looking at is the old front door of the farmhouse. Now, it's the front door of the chicken house. You can see, it's like the matrix in here, all these weeds growing down. Morning mate, how you going? Just come to check your feed and your water? Pace likes to go and check it himself. There's the feed looking. Oh yeah, we still got some, plenty of that. It's like a cat door to you, isn't it Pace? It's for the chickens, but he can fit through there. Morning ladies. Morning. Oh, jeez. Man. Two days without collecting eggs and we've got a whole lot. You got some under you too. I'll pay sniffing the eggs one again and we get a lot of eggs and I give them away. I don't sell them. I give them to family and friends that need eggs but um, that's actually three days not two days of eggs since we collected it. Pace come out of there. I want to show you guys uh, something that I bought and something, quite frankly, I enjoy using. It's got a bull bar on the front. Right on lawnmower. Does it go? It's a bloody beauty. My mate uh, Simon, his dad, sold me this, and uh, it's got a few leaves on it because it's under the trees and they're all coming off right now, but it's a lot of fun. Pace getting a bit of love from Damo this morning. He likes a pet, eh? He loves a pet. He loves a pet. We all like a pet, mate. Celery in as well. No, he wouldn't eat celery, it was a bit of grass. He's been <laughs> having a chew on your buddy, eh? Yep. Morning. There you go. Here comes all creamy running. Do you think you're going to miss out on your sheep nuts, mate, did you? Well, houseboat would be a beautiful place to stay, but the council won't allow us to have anybody in it. There's the old farmhouse, still with no sun on it. And the houseboats had that sun this morning probably for the last half hour. And it's nice and warm. But it's just a place for the sheep now to keep out of the sun and keep out of the rain. And Pace has got another apple off the tree. You don't even want to eat it, do you, mate? You've picked it and you, your eyes are big in your belly. Come on, Pace. Pace, come. You don't need that, mate. We do a walk around this bottom paddock as much for myself as for the dogs, just a bit of fitness. This morning I'm taking Pace, and he did bring his apple in. And then we come back and do it again with all the dogs. Here in Tasman, it's a place that used to have apple trees for miles. This used to be all apples when I first moved here. But as more people flock to this area to live, they took away the apple trees and they put in a lot of housing, which is a heap of all those hills up there too. Lots of houses. But it's a place that has really become a place of the rich, uh, which is a shame because a lot of uh, us Kiwis that, particularly my children, it's a generation, they can't really afford to live here anymore. The prices have gone through the roof. And all the people next door on this side here were American and German and English and they all came over from other, other countries and they bought up here, driving the prices up. And really, really it's just a rural, <laughs> really a rural, really it's just a rural place for growing apples and, and produce and sheep and stuff but that's what's happening all around New Zealand and a lot of little communities, country communities, rural communities and it's a shame because we're losing places for growing food and we need food 
it's the nature of people, I guess. Uh, someone owns something, they can see they can make a dollar, and they sell it, and they'll sell it to the highest bidder. They don't care whether it's a Kiwi or it's a, a American or a German. That's just how it goes. And that's what we're seeing here happening in, in New Zealand. But I do really feel that the, the prices of property is going to come down again because it's just, they seem to be overinflated in my thinking. But who knows? Who knows what the property market's going to do? But we're, we're a nation in New Zealand where we're property driven. Everybody wants to own a home and everybody thinks it's to be an end all. But having lived in Europe for a long time and uh, 13 years working over there, and renting all the time, well, actually living on the road most of the time really, I was going from one show to another when I was in Tainer. All of my friends over there all rent apartments and they're all happy. And none of them aspired to, to own their own place, they just live in these big apartment blocks and have their lives and get on with it and it's good. So, I don't know, it's, it can be a bit of a, a trap, the old property market too. People have this pressure to buy something, in fact they don't actually spend all their life doing the things they'd love to do, they spend all their life paying off something which at the end that they can't take with them when they go so it's like I don't think it's a being end all although having said that at this stage of my life I do love having a bit of dirt to call my own and finally call my own after years of traveling and it does feel good to walk around on it that's the flip side it's not a bad flip side either so Pace was bred by Wade Waller and Wade Waller sells a breed of dog he calls a Waller Terrier. Waller being his last name. What's in the mix? I can't tell you. But I think if you look, you'll probably work it out yourself. Clearly there's a bit of Jack Russell in there and a bit of Fox Terrier. A bit of Whippet. But there's also a whole lot more than that too. And that's our Wade's secret mix. Hey mate, great little pets as well as pig dogs. And he's got a bark collar on as he's been barking and... Uh, Man, that thing's not been on the charger for two weeks. It's still going. Keeps you quiet, that innit, buddy, eh? Otherwise, you keep everybody awake at night. Good boy. Come on. There goes Mary off to work this morning. I don't know if you guys can hear the banging behind me right now, but that's the construct behind those trees there. It's where Clint and all his mates fabricate buildings. It's a really good business making a, a real good product and I'm thinking about buying one on often for a studio. Tomorrow being Thursday, hopefully I'm going to go and talk to Clint and get a price to build a, a studio because right now the old farmhouse is not finished. We've got a bedroom in it. That's my bedroom and I've got a kitchen and that's it. Everything else is need to be built. And over here they fabricate these uh, units and the next job for me mate Arb is the living room. It's been a long time since Arb's worked for me and we want to keep going with the house with Arb uh, before we can do that we need to empty out the old living room which is just it's fallen to bits the roof's all fallen on and put everything in it which is my guitars and my studio equipment and that white unit over there you can see across the road get uh, Clint to build one of those for us and have the studio next to the house at the back of it where you can't get to anyway really and uh, create that so Arb has a space to put all the stuff and start the rebuild I can see a duck in the lane box finally good one, that's where we want them behind the wire there, a bit hard to see through there but there is a duck sitting on that, excellent morning ladies and gentlemen Pace get out of there, oh Pace well, there was a duck in there, eh? You just scared it out of the box. Wasn't meant to happen, was it, eh? Hey? <laughs> we are getting quite a collection of eggs in there. Good one. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll check your feet is working and we'll get out of here and let you carry on having your day. See you later. Oh, I can see an egg on the other side of the bank, too. We might grab that. There we go. Not a big egg for a duck egg, but an egg. The whole pace is hopeful, it's going to be for a you mate. What we'll do is we'll exchange it for one of these older ones. And I think that one there, pace can have. No, wait for it. Wait for it. No, wait for it. No, wait for it. Eat up. Good boy. Little teeth getting in there.
like a surgeon, he just takes the uh, shell off and empties a whole lot out. Pace just loves eggs. There's a couple of things he really loves. One is eggs and the other is cheese. It's a great life on the farm for my dogs. They really have a great life. And I love giving them a good life. Good boy. Maybe I spoil them a bit too much, but hey, that's one of the pleasures in life, isn't it? Spoiling something or someone you love. Damo was talking to me last night and saying, you know, a lot of people you know, Clay, they're hunters, predominantly pig hunters. And they're a bit of a tough bunch that don't really care much about anything else and just going pig hunting all the time. And you see, Clay, you do all sorts of stuff, like you just filmed The Magical Cottage. And he said a lot of pig hunters wouldn't be interested in that sort of stuff. And I said, yeah, I know. I sort of spread myself quite thin because I've got an interest in lots of things in life. I love pig hunting because mostly because it's the first thing I sort of got involved with when I was very young uh, living in the Abel Tasman National Park when my dad was a ranger. Have you eaten that already mate, eh? Have you eaten that already? You have too. He doesn't eat his shells. I wish he would because of calcium. And I grew up seeing it and doing it and loving it but it's true. I love all sorts of things and uh, I love all sorts of things about all sorts of different people. So I've decided to embrace uh, while my hunting's a bit slow right now, well, actually almost non-existent at the moment, that will change hopefully, but I've decided to embrace other things that I enjoy in life and film them and share them with you. And one of those things is cottage industries, people that do their own things at home, whether it's a knife maker or somebody who's got a firewood business or someone who, who's got a nursery. I want to look at those things because more and more right now, the way the world's going, Particularly here in New Zealand too, I think. No, well, not just the world, but yeah, here we've got this thing where everything's so bloody expensive. Mad Kiwi the other day said to me that a price of bloody kilogram cheese is, is twenty one dollars. Holy shit! Who can afford that? So maybe I'll go and visit a cheesemaker. <laughs> just anybody that does their own thing. Uh, because I make videos, and that's my job. I don't have much time for doing other stuff, but I would like to increase that too. So the way around that to be sustainable for me is to do what I'm doing right now. To make a, a snap vlog is what I call it, where it's on the phone, no editing, nothing inv just involved filming, pause, record, pause, and then send it to you guys. And then I can get on with the day. And today's work is working on the launch. A uh, young Damo, who's with us now, and my mate Blair, we've been working on it the last three days. This morning we're doing the electrics and the anti-fouling. She's on the hard, so that's what's going on there. So I can make a little vlog in the morning for you, show you what's just going on around here, and then carry on. But I can also film a bit of that too. Now this is interesting, check this out. Some of you will know what I'm standing on. <laughs> yeah, it's a big concrete slab and it's got some sheep shit on it that's dried out. That's because the sheep like to get off the grass and the sheep that I had on here uh, was my merino and her two lambs which have now gone but underneath it is a well and it's a well on my property and water is always a good thing to have now, that's a well that I could put a pump down in, and it's not water you could drink yourself but it's water you could irrigate the paddock with you could feed plants and you could livestock could drink it too it's the same water that runs down this gully here which feeds the duck's pond at the end there. So having that well is a real asset to have. Ideally I need to have another well, one for our own drinking water, because currently we get it off the neighbour Murray. He, he, he's got us on his water, but that can't last forever. So water's everything. Without water you've got nothing. You've got, no, you've got nothing at all. You've got no lifestyle. You can't even live without water. So it's the main blood to your existence on the land. How many apples are the dogs going to eat this morning? G'day Bigsy, hey, you good boy? Good dog, come on, let's get for a walk. Come on mate. Now mate, we don't want jumping up. You stay down, okay? You've got sharp claws. Down is a good place to be, right there, okay? No, where you got? Good boy. What do you got, Poe? Another an apple, Poe? Come on, you're going to be pooing apples for Africa. Come on. One of you corrected me, the first day of winter, officially in New Zealand, is the 1st of June. Not far to go then.
Get out of there, Pace. Pace, get him behind, Pace. Pace, get him behind. Pace, come. Now, now, Pace, come. Poe, come. Good girl, Poe. You saw that vehicle going down the driveway. Good girl. Okay, we don't want three dogs playing. Two's enough, okay? You stay with me. Good girl. I shouldn't actually let Pace get away with that. Wait till he's back in. Pace, come. Pace. Get in here. Good boy. Stay in. Where you go, Big Z? Stay in. Stay here, okay? You stay. Tail wagon, 100 mile an hour. Tough little wanker. No fighting. One word from me, they do whatever they like. I don't mind them playing like this, but if it gets out of control, it can really get out of control. We haven't had a dog fight since we got rid of B. It's been really good. This is a good form of exercise too. Good luck catching him. Ooh. He doesn't mind mixing it up, old Pace. He's a lot lighter than Bigs is for sure. You stand his ground too, won't you? Good dogs. Don't know if you can see that hawk flying over my duck pond. I'm trying to get my eggs, no doubt. They get a lot of them. Post telling him off now. Yeah, she's telling him off. She's saying, piss off, mate. I know he's come back to rock her up more, she'll tell him. Tail's still wagging, that's a good sign. Come on. All of us have these little joys in life, these things that make us happy for a moment. And they're few and far between, really. And as you get older, it gets harder with a lot of things because your body just doesn't want to play ball. It's like, oh, that shoulder's not going to work, or that's not going to work. One of the things that's a joy to me is walking the dogs. I look forward to it when I wake up. I can't wait to go for a walk in my paddock and walk the dogs. And the other joy is having a coffee. Now, I love coffee. It's not always good if I have too much coffee because I get a bit jittery. I think most people do. So I have a single shot in the morning. And I do drink a glass of water or something and go for a walk with the dogs. Then I go back and... I try to keep to one coffee a day. There's nothing wrong with having three or four coffees a day, I'm sure, but I just keep to one coffee a day for me, and I love it. So I'm enjoying one thing, walking around the paddock with the dogs, but I've also got something small to look forward to. And I think the reason I enjoy it is I limit it to one coffee a day. Because by lunchtime, I feel like having another coffee, but I go, no, no, it's a treat. It's expensive. It's actually gifted to me my coffee by Chloe in Australia from Swart Cafe. And it's a special coffee. I do share it with all the people that come to the house. But it's a real special, it's sort of like a little moment in the morning. And I stop, and I'll sit down at the computer, and I'll check all my emails, and I'll answer everybody's comments, and I'll drink that coffee and really enjoy it. And then on with my day. I'm sure you've got something like that yourself. Now, a trick I think is, with anything, is in moderation. Uh, I'm not against drugs and alcohol, and oh, coffee's a drug. But when you start abusing it, that's when you've lost sight of the treat and it being something that's really uh, a special thing in your life. If you need to have a bit of a, a couple of tokes at night to get to sleep, great. Or during a recreational place, go out and have a couple of drinks or you've got something to celebrate, great. But when you drink all the time or, you're, or time where you drink loads of coffee, you then end up becoming unwell and it's the bouncing act. And I've got to say, I'm guilty. I've been unbalanced through my life. I've been excessive with everything at different times. It's taken me a long time to learn to calm the farm, slow down, and just go steady and go easy on it. When I was a young fella, my motto was everything to excess. And as I've got older, it's everything to moderation. I, I know by saying this that uh, I'm really having this conversation with myself because I still am a bit excessive with stuff and I'm trying to remind myself, just go steady, mate. Sometimes you push it too hard. <laughs> Come on, mate. Come on. Come on, buddy. Don't 
Don't you bite. No biting, eh? I know you're just trying to hold, but that's not nice, okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, go on. Oh, there's the hawk now. He's just leaving the duck pond. Ah, oh, and I bet he's just taken an egg. Just leaving right now. He heard us. I was wondering what the ducks were all doing. All in a row, they're looking at something. There was a hawk in there. Look at all you pussies. How many of you are there? If you're ganged up on the hawk, you could tell him to piss off. But you stand there watching your eggs getting obliterated. You can do the same if you've got young in there. Come on, grow some balls, you ducks. I thought earlier on this morning that Peso got all the eggs and all I can think of is another one got laid while I was up there and the bloody hook's come in and got it. Ah, I see what's happened. Another one has been laid down here. But we've lifted the hawk. Oh, nice warm egg too. So that's what he was after, eh? Hey guys, next time a hawk comes in here to take these, gang up on him. I mean, how many of you are there? Nine of you. You could deal with one hawk. And no, Pace, you've already had your egg this morning. Don't look so sad, Pace. Don't look like you're starving and you've had nothing. You've had an egg this morning. You're not getting it, mate. No, you're not. There's your shell down there, the last one you just had. It's going in the box, mate. Look, you didn't even munch your last shell up, so you could eat that. Hey, hey Po, did you miss out an egg? Oh, tomorrow morning for you, mate. Come on. Well, the gate doesn't keep her out, but you can't get through it, can you? Come on, mate. Good old Kiwi farm gate. Come on, buddy. Yes, you know what time it is, don't you, buddy, eh? Good boy. Good dog. You're a good boy. Are you going to stand on there all day, mate, or are you going to get into your box? Because you're not going to get for there. That's actually not your box, Pace. Big Z up. Big Z up. Good boy. Pace, you're in the wrong box, mate. Pace, come. Good boy. Poe, Big Z, and Pace. You're actually supposed to be in your box, Pace. Yes, you are, mate. In your box. Oh, in your box. Get up. Stay there. This one will fall apart when Big Z eats it. Leave it. Won't take long for the dribbles to begin. You blowing a bubble yet, Pace? Hey. You can see my hands out here. When I drop it, that's a command. Good dogs. And you can see why I chopped Bigsy's up. He would choke on it for sure. Go steady, Bigsy. Go steady, mate. Slow down, Bigsy. Each dog's got a cave they can take their food into and eat away from their mates if they wish. Now you eat like a lady, don't you, Poe? Eh? Still a bit too fast, mate, but anyway, good girl. A big hearty thank you to Hara who gave us a couple of dog roll yesterday. Damo was at home here, and the courier driver who's Hari came up the driveway and uh, he dropped off some paint for the boat we're working on, but also gifted us a couple of dog rolls for the dog. So thanks so much, mate. One of you said, uh, Clay, get yourself a tunnel house. I do have a glass house. It was also gifted to me by one of you good bastards and we use it all the time for our produce. Uh, Going to start getting on with the day. Thanks a lot for listening and joining us. I hope you enjoyed this little home video. Nothing flash. Uh, we'll see you all soon. Be good, can't be good, be careful. We'll see you next one. See you later.